Welcome to this video on Smart Chips in Google Docs. This is part of a wider series on the app menu features in Google Docs, so make sure you check them out too. We can access these features in Google Docs here by clicking on the Add More button, and that gives us a range of features, and we're going to be looking at Smart Chips. You can also access them by typing in the Add key, it brings up the same menu, or you can go to the Insert menu and then there's a range of inserts here. You've got the smart chips and some of them are separated out as well. The idea behind these smart chips is to make your document more interactive, saving you time and improving engagement with your documents. We're gonna look at these in the context of a document I'm creating. So I'm actually gonna insert my lesson template that's in my building blocks. And then an option here I have is insert a date. Now, as I said, I can do the at and here I can actually start typing date if I want to put the date option or I could actually start typing today if it was today's date and then that's going to insert there if I hover over I can actually insert a time as well imagine I want to add in a future time again I can add the date I can choose a date and then add a time in And there we have our date smart chip. The next smart chip we're going to look at is the timer. So I'm going to put in my title and then I want a timer in there for my introduction. So if I click on timer, I can go in and start typing. So imagine I wanted three minutes, not five minutes. I would do three, zero, zero, hit enter. And then that's ready to go when I click on it and it will start counting down. With these, bear in mind you can increase the size of this if you increase the font. So we're going to change this maybe and increase the size. As well as a timer, we also have a stopwatch. If I click on the app button here, I can click on the stopwatch. And once I'm ready, I just hit go and it's counting up. The next thing we're going to look at is drop downs. When I click on the drop down, I can do a new drop down or use a preset one or one I've already created. So if I click on the preset, you can see here there's some different options and then I can use that. If I want to create my own, so again, I'm going to go to drop down, I'm going to go to new drop down, I'm going to give it name. Now, I always find it's useful on the first option to actually put also the template name. So then they'll know what they're actually being asked to insert. So we can add in some names. We can move them around if we want to, and we can add some color in here as well. If I click save, you can then see my drop down, like so. Here's an example of how you could use drop downs in the classroom. So here we have a piece of writing and I've gone through and I've created a list of different types of speech. So if I click on the adverb, I then have a choice of choosing a different adverb that I want to put in here. And the same for verbs and the same for nouns. And this is a great structured way in helping maybe your students with their writing. So they could choose something there. But equally, if they didn't actually want this one, they can still delete it and put their own word in as well. Here I've got drop downs for questions. So I've asked the question and I've gone through and I've created the answers and they can choose whichever one they feel is most applicable. And here I've got an example within a table. I've got a task name. I can choose the person I'm going to assign it to, the progress of the task like so and if I wanted to insert a new row here we go and I can insert that again like this next we're going to look at tasks so if I click on task I can create a task here I can put the assignee in so just put the name of the person And I can add in a date if I wish to as well. It doesn't seem to let you add a time in as yet, but that might come in time. I assign the task. Obviously, it's going to ask me to share the document with the person so they're aware of it as well. So 
So I'm going to share that. And so you can see here, you've got the little uh, there icon, the profile icon, and the little task button. So if I click on that, it will complete the task. Now I'm going to go over to my other profile, and you can see that task has then appeared on my task area here. And if I go into my shared document, you can see here, it's got my task, and I can click on that when I'm done. And that will also complete the task from my task menu. Next, we're going to look at voting chips. So voting chips allow you to put in a little marker. And so I'm going to click it here, and we close down to voting chip. Now they've got some presets here. So the thumbs up, the heart, the plus, you could use that, or you can customize it. And so I could choose a tick. And therefore, when somebody clicks on that, it's going to add number. So, so I'm going to click in my other document as well, just to show you. And it shows you as well, if I hover on that, you can see who has voted on that as well. Next, we're going to use the placeholder chip. So I can click on here, go to placeholder chip and I get a range of options. And so here I'm going to assign it to a person. Here we're going to put a file. So again, we're going to go down, placeholder chip. I'm going to do a file. Same again. Date. And lastly, I'm going to do location, place. And so this is just a reminder that when we're populating this table, so I could put it here again. So once I put my task in, I can then click on the person and I can add somebody in. I could click on a file, add a file in, a date. So it's an easy way to populate this table and also to remind people that they need to add things into the table. And the last chip we're going to look at is the variables smart chip. So here's an example of a letter I use creating Google Bard. And as you can see, it's already got placeholders in for the subject, parents, student's name, etc. What I can do with the variables, if I'm going to delete this, I'm going to put in the at, I can start typing, I'm going to do variable. It's going to ask me for a name. So this was the student name. I'm going to create that. And as you can see there, you've got the student name box. Now there are other areas this appears. So I can select that area. If I go over here on student name, I can click insert and do that again, wherever that student name might appear. So again, this is a great way of creating a template that you can then use over and over again. It's gonna be quite easy. What I can then do with this, if on any one of these fields where I've got the student name in, I can click the button and I can put in the name of the student, hit enter, and it's then populated all the other fields as well. If I want to go in and change this, it's going to change it in the other fields as well. If I need to edit it, I can either edit it here or delete it. Another example I created was in a writing practice, similar to the drop downs. And so if you see here, I'm telling the students what I want in each box. So it prompts them to then put in their own adjective, for example. The reason I've created them verb one, verb two, for example, is so that if it was just verb and verb, it would actually then populate the same verb in both. So I'd want to make sure they're named differently if I wanted to use them for an exercise like this. So I hope this is a helpful introduction to smart chips and you can start using them to make your documents more interactive and effective for your students and colleagues.